Hey, what is going on everyone? This is your boy from Freeside. And I'm here to just, you know, um, well, for a few reasons. Uh, first thing, I'm just uh, trying out this, uh, these new headphones I just got yesterday. Um, so, you know, just trying to give it a... <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, this is all, like, live, so, like, you know, it's editing is... Um, it's uh, it's needlessly cumbersome. And, you know... And besides, like, you know, I gen generally, I don't keep my, my videos too, too long anyway, so don't edit that much. But anyways, um, so multi-purpose video. Uh, firstly, I'm just trying out these new uh, headphones and, and, and microphone so that I'm not depending on my webcam microphone. The webcam that I got in 2013, if it's actually, it's actually been like, oh, like seven years now, so... Because I I believe I got this in August as well. All right, so that and you know what I've been um yeah. And the second thing this is gonna this is gonna be a blindness and visual impairment related video because um I thought um I didn't do my research whether such videos like this exist for people with visual impairments. But um, in my case, I am pretty certain that it doesn't exist because the part of the world where I grew up, I think there's only another. I know of another person who's visually impaired, and she, like you know, I know of her because uh, she showed up on some YouTube videos, uh, and that too, it was on some some newspaper YouTube channel, newspapers YouTube channel. Yes, I come from, I come from, not the day that I come from a location more specifically location than days where uh we used to get newspapers and no we used to get a heavy supply of newspapers it was to the point where we had to buy subscriptions and if we paid extra we get we get uh extra magazines that uh, and those magazines m more specifically covers you know, uh, young trends, uh, and like you know, they're more like a tabloid journalism and more entertainment focused. But I've been watching. Um, I'm sorry for dragging on, but you know, th this is just to give you context. I've been watching a guy called uh, his YouTube name is Ushanka Show. Uh, it's uh, Sergey Sputnikov. You know, that's his. Uh, uh, well, a pen name, if you will. And uh, he essentially uh, was a guy who was born in the Ukrainian uh, 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 Soviet Union. And he he basically talks about a lot of things uh, in his time that he's seen grown up. You know, his lived experience of the Soviet Union. Alright, and um, I thought, you know what? Especially when it comes to education... I might as well talk about how I went to school and I managed to finish school as a legally blind, visually impaired person. Mind you, mind you, in a country where the system did not have the support infrastructure at that time, I'm pretty sure a lot more has develop right now I mean I've actually visited you know the newer iterations of the school once I've uh, uh, grown up uh, you know and like you know even I believe my last visit in 2015 accessibility has been given a bit more importance it's still a long way to go but then again even the best country in the world like that I have seen in terms of accessibility is you know the UK even they have, I won't say a very long way to go, but I would say quite some way to go. Their, their, you know, res respectably, at a good distance towards, like, you know, providing, like, you know, full-fledged accessibility. They're at a respectable level of progression. But yes, um... So, as you might have, uh, like, you know, just to describe my visual condition. Hold on. 
Yeah, ju yeah just uh, remember that I have to mute my phone. Um, I am extremely short-sighted. I believe my right eye uh, visual acuity 5 over 60 and my left eye 4 over 60. That's the last that I recall. So, like, you know, by all diagnoses, I'm considered legally blind. And um, legally blind slash low partial. So, like, you know, you can look up the uh, classifications. I'm like the very lower end of uh, lower end of severely visually impaired like the moderate to severely visually visually impaired there's a spectrum 6 over 18 to 3 over 60 so given that like you know my combined my visual acuity is some some like 4.5 over 60 or may, maybe a little bit more than that but yeah that that goes to show like you know how bad my vision is but still um i can still see color it's not that i cannot see color i can still see color i just have no central vision like whatsoever i whatsoever i d cannot see through the center of my eyes i have to see through the through the periphery it's like an it's like a it's like the letter c uh i mean but you know if i raise my eyelid i can even see through the top of my eyes but you know w you know as my eyes as they are uh it's like the letter c on its back that's my field of view Okay. Now, how did I manage school? Okay. And as this goes, I'll give you the, uh, like, you know, how I, like, you know, a, a bit more of insight on how I got it, how I, like, you know, decided to make the video. Um, we had a schooling system where, uh, like, essentially we had a main teacher, like, after kindergarten. We had a main teacher because in kindergarten my eyesight wasn't that bad. I mean, if I sat at the front of the desk or something, perhaps I could have still seen some stuff on the board. But you know, kindergarten the best the best I recall. In fact, I don't remember that much. I remember having a. I remember having a like uh, one of those gift uh, briefcases because we used to have a lot of souvenir stuff like we had those uh, g you know d weird uh, gift brief souvenir briefcases like you know you get for children like you know you get school bags at the shape of so you know maybe the girls get it in the shape of purses I got one in the shape of a briefcase it had like straps on the bag uh, on a, straps on the back, you know, so that you can like you know wear it over your back, and it literally, th it I remember it clearly saying Kentucky Fried Chicken, and it ha it had the white and red colors as well, and like my name was written in red. What I can remember from those days is that, um, we learned like you know numbers and how to write and. We, you know, we, uh, especially when I, when I got to like, you know, we had LKG, Junior KG and Senior KG. Okay. So when I got to Senior KG, uh, more specifically, we, we had a f an emphasis on calligraphy. And, w in, you know, we used to, we, we learned cursive writing, English cursive writing from that point. So I remember that I remember the science textbooks that you know a lot of the print was large enough for me to see as it was. And then all of a sudden I remember one day th and this was this was on my birthday because I remember I remember like you know we used to wear school uniforms except on our birthday where we were allowed to wear anything we wanted as long as it was you know not obscene. So I wore uh, like you know my my birthday clothes. I'm not gonna say birthday suit. Yeah, I I wore my birthday clothes on top of my birthday suit. Okay, uh, all right. Um. So and all I can remember is that my vision was extremely blurry for the entire afternoon. That and I remember like you know like. Oh, Whilst we were waiting for, like, you know, our rides to uh, take us home, we, uh, like, you know, there used to be, like, a giant TV with Tom and Jerry playing. But that's all I can remember from that. Um, 
So yeah, at that time I still had a bit more functional vision than I did right now. When I was in the first grade, um, like first, second, and third grade, we used to have a main teacher, and this main teacher essentially used to teach us, you know, used to teach us all the subjects. Okay, and I remember, especially in the first grade, I used to sit right up front because, uh, you know, and here's where the problems really started to kick in. The reason I used to sit in the front is because we we had to take that we had to write down a lot of uh, like you know words you know to improve our vocabulary. It used to be called dictation. We had a separate notebook for it, and every time there was a new word, I had to walk up to the board, no, learn what the word is, and then and then walk back to the desk. So if I was sat up front, it would have been much more easier. The distance would be much more shorter. But yeah, still, um, mathematics was uh, was rudimentarily easy as I can remember. It, it, it was actually pretty, like you know, pretty easy. Uh, we didn't have like you know, we just had general sciences, and this is a uh, general science. I remember the the book was actually uh, well, at least on the front page. I don't know how, how it goes on behind the scenes, but on the front page, it was authored by the owner of our school, the correspondent of our school, and you had a lot of large, like, a lot of the stuff were in, in large enough print still, and uh, you had a lot of pictures, a lot of pictures. This was even true with uh, our social studies book. And yes, uh, a good amount of our, our social studies, you know, um, we learned like you know from a bit more from an Indian perspective yes I, I went to an uh, especially an English medium school this is what we call it English medium school but it was run by Indians okay um so in oh yes and we had a foreign language we had Arabic as well, but Arabic was just uh, uh, memorizing some words and just like, you know, just, just learning how to write. And we had uh, Bengali. Like, you know, we had a choice of Urdu. Uh, Urdu Hin Hindi was a little difficult because uh, not many Indian students in my class. Most of them were actually Pakistani. Okay. So we had uh, Urdu, Hindi and Bengali. And we might have had French. I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, the Bengali is where I faced the most difficulty because the the books that I had they were in very small print. Like they were okay. They were not as infuriatingly small print as the text in Doom Eternal, but they were still small print. All I could read were the like you know the the title you know the title pages, and like you know, uh, the and just like you know whatever I could find you know you know that was in a you know that was in large enough print, and I had to make do with practicing to read Bengali with that. Okay, so first, second, third grade. Uh, this was you know, yeah, yeah. In the in the third grade. Yeah, th this is where the problem started to kick in a bit more, because yes, we had a uh, we had a general science and whatnot, but the textbooks then started to change. The textbooks became a bit more difficult to read. Yeah, they still had pictures, and um, thankfully by this time, I developed a sense of memorizing, and this is why, like you know, one of the reasons, like yeah, I understand the objections to rote memorization but also I understand the benefits of rote memorization compared to people who did not rote memorize who did not develop that skill of rote memorization like for on a cognitive level I understand the pros and cons and it's just the execution that actually uh, like along with maybe a few personal factors, but it's the execution of road memorization that actually will lead to, 
you know the best outcome well, mostly with the execution but yeah so i remember our teachers our teachers used to our teachers used to drill us um with um a, a lot of the chapters in the science textbook and she used to like uh, like you know we had we had a female teacher mrs lakshmi um she used to actually like you know put, put on like a performance moving her hands and legs well 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 mostly her hands because like you know we were we, we were we were we were focused on her and what she's teaching and she used to like let's say um let's say anatomy of the body okay like you know let's just put it that way you know you know parts of the human body she used to put that into like a little song and that made it very e like much more easier for us to remember and unfortunately this is all i had so i had to rely upon this a lot my vision was still like somewhat better because the your regular uh uh believe a uh, uh, point 11 or point 13 print you get on an uh, on an um, a4 a4 paper i could still read that but with very like very slowly with straining my eyes a lot okay and yes we had a a final exam before moving on to the next grade and no we, we did it was not on a curve and what not and yeah we had like you know different sections of of classes and what not when i moved to the fourth grade oh my god the troubles began the troubles how they began because now we got a separation of subjects biology physics and chemistry okay in the science and i me like for some reason i all always wanted to be a doctor i still want to be a doctor like you know if i get the chance i want to go into medicine because like maybe it comes from the curiosity of my like you know i have the that standard dad is an engineer mom is a doctor there's a you know a standard sex no not standard, a stereotypical sex well to do middle upper middle class like you know upper middle class family from south south asia so yeah um i always wanted to like you know like you know learn more about the human body because what i found fascinating about it is not only how it works but the interconnectivity of every system in your body where like you know if something begins to severely malfunction if one part of your body just severely begins to malfunction if it is not removed or amputated it can actually poison a lot of other systems in the body this interconnectivity mastering and memorizing this oh my god require, uh, require a, a tremendous amount of effort but yes so chemistry was not an issue yet because we 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 seldom use the labs seldom biology i remember our biology lab was just a room with some specimens and i believe uh, we had a we had a, a light microscope and uh, our our biology teacher i think what was name was uh, miss preeta or mrs preeta now um uh she actually um uh, prepared a specimen of cheek cells and i remember i'm like you know i, I was thinking to myself you know what just peep through the microscope and just and just look out and, like you know pe- you know step away from the microscope and just say and just tell everyone that you saw something because like you know i i did not want to hold the class up you know just trying to think like no i can't see i can't see i can't see and like we were at a schedule i i did not want to hold it hold everyone up okay um physics was not a problem at that point because we were just learning about about formulas and what not chemist like like i said chemistry also we were just starting to learn about the atom and what not and like you know the No 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 we're not learning about the atom yet we're oh Yeah I think we started to learn about the atom I mean we started to learn about the cell in the fourth grade And English and mathematics were you know as they were you know the English textbook did get a little smaller so it was a little harder to read Okay and at that point is where I started 
using or uh, that point of the fifth grade is where I started using what I like to call improvised magnif magnification devices. Essentially, every type of magnifying glass that I could find, I tried it on. It got to the point where at one point, uh, when I went, I remember one time I went to Bangladesh, right? Because, uh, you know, like I used to, like, I'll, that, those are back in the days where we used to, I used to still go to vacations. Like, you know, go to Bangladesh for, uh, for, the, for the summer break and whatnot. At one point, someone had a broken piece of a binocular, a broken eyepiece of a binocular. And I remember I just tried to read a page okay just you know just trying to see like you know okay let me see like you know this ha broken binocular let's see like what effect it has like how i panicked about it i'm like what the hell i can read i can read what's on this page so after that like you know i even bought like a like a i would say test binoculars uh, like it is like this. I remember the power 7x35, uh, a 7x35 binoculars, so that I could see what's on the, what's on the on the chalkboard. But it turns out that it didn't. You know, it wasn't very effective because uh, you it, it has to do with adjusting a lot of the focus and you know, ad adjusting the zoom and the focus a lot. Like you know, uh, like you just to get proper clarity and like you know, it has to do with like you know, lighting and stuff. So. So, in a system where you have um, time limits to classes and a lot of content to learn, I could not take that extra time to adjust my binoculars while I was sitting at a, at a good distance for binoculation and then put it back down, then write something, then put it, you know, pick it back up again and like, you know, wash and repeat. We could not afford that time, so instead, what ended up happening was that, like you know, just you know, as usual, walk up to the board when possible. And for personal reading, I I had I bought a 10x50 powered binocular, and uh, we had to break one of the eyepieces and use that as an as an improvised magnification device, which. I believe I had till I believe till the end of high school I still had that okay also the content the content increased dramatically so uh, I had someone else write the notes for me at one point because you know at that point like you know my handwriting was, was was also not that legible and like you know my handwriting was by default it was a little large because like I generally like you know pr grew up with something that I could initially read so my notebooks did not have enough pages okay so that continued on with the with the fourth and fifth grade um, and yes, here we ha started having different subject teachers. Okay, now let me pause over here. Let me just, uh, like, you know, just to uh, digress a little bit. Like, one, one of the things I find so fascinating about the topics of uh, the vid educational videos, uh, videos about education on the channel of the uh, Ushanka show, you have no idea how similar, how astoundingly similar the education system was I had compared to the USSR. I'm like, wait a minute, was I in the right country? Like, was I in, like, you know, like, was I in, like, the, like, a local speaking Republic of the USSR or something because I'm like wait a minute You guys have different subject teachers. We had different subject teachers. You guys had a had a school planner We had a school planner Okay, 
you guys uh, had to write down all your homeworks and then have your parents sign it every day. So did we. You guys had six day weekends. No, no, six day weeks. So did we. I'm like, wait, what the hell is going on? In fact, I remember like, you know, w once they changed the six day weeks to a five day week, it was actually quite a big deal. A lot of the newspapers uh, actually, you know, portrayed it as a big deal. Like, wow, now even more, like, you know, there's a lot more relaxation time. And like, you know, it it keeps going on and on and on. Like, a lot of the stuff that I mentioned, like, you know, us having the same teacher essentially for, you know, for all subjects from the first to the third grade. Yeah. I'm like, this is, like, apparently this is also in the Soviet system. Even to the point where um, the price of some of the books will be hard printed on onto the book instead of what you find in stores uh, like you know you have a separate tag a price tag put on it a lot of them would be hard printed onto the book I'm like wait yeah like yeah we had those too like it was rare but we had those too but anyways um getting back to how I dealt with my with my visual impairment so just to recap a lot of it were of road memorization Okay, and this is why, like, I had to pay a lot of extra attention in class. And basically, based on the little bit I could read at home, like, you know, I had to memorize that and try to recall. I had to rely a lot on that, a lot on what I uh, recall, like, you know, what I could remember from the afternoon once I went back home. Homework was, like, Homework, most of it were, were, you know, were just, uh, like, you know, writing some stuff down. And, like, you know, my parents used to, like, help me out with sometimes reading the questions or helping me with, with homework whatnot. Once I moved to the sixth grade, um, here's where the content increased even further. And here's where the real challenges began. Because there was too much for me to remember. Like I cannot store an I cannot store a seven hour movie in my head. A new seven hour movie in my head every day and remember each you know, segment it properly and remember each and every bit of it. So what my dad used to do, um he used to like, you know, and, and he used to go to the office. Like, you know, like you know, a, a lot like like you know, you know, in the in the mornings and in the and in the and in the evening, he used to, like he like he used to go to the office, uh, you know, on both shifts. So between shifts, what he used to do, he used to actually record a lot of my notes on a tape recorder. Like we used to buy, like you know, and yes, this is from the days where tape recorders were a thing. Like you know, we used to have like you know stereo systems and. If we had a CD player in in the stereo system, that was considered a super hi-fi CD, like the super hi-fi, uh, super high-tech, like you know, space age type of technology. Like it used to be considered super cool, and and like you know, they were expensive as well. Like this is back in the day where like you know, you had sound system, then you had like you know, hundred watts or fifty watts or five hundred watts. Like as if it like. Like all we knew is like you know, sound decibels. Like when you, when you, when you, when you think back about it now, but yeah. So some of these tape recorders came with a recording feature, like like you know cassette players came with a rec uh, audio cassette players came with a recording feature. So my dad used to my dad bought one for me and he used to record a l the days, a lot of the days. Um, uh, contents and um, I used to basically play that back and some t like you know obviously like you know th there it had its own limitations as well because like you know like a lot of times there's too, too much content you're not gonna get through everything but yeah he did he really did the best my dad really did the you know 
the best he could and like you know I took advantage of that <sighs> yeah um we uh, we also had uh, like you know to add to subjects I believe we also had Islamic studies from you know from the first grade no I think we had Islamic studies from from KG or at least the the preliminary version of it so yeah that continued and um in terms of lab work I always like you know did not do labs or like you know take part in uh, dissections or whatnot and the 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 examination system that I had we had something called paper 6 like because I, I was under the IGCSE we had paper 1 that was multiple choice paper 2 was the core cur core curriculum content paper 3 was the extended curriculum content I believe paper 4 and Oh no 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 no! Oh no! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We had sorry. Yeah, we had papers one th one through four. If I'm if I'm remembering it right, we had paper one was multiple choice. Paper two was just you know average stuff. Or was there something else? Can't remember. I remember what we had paper three and paper four. These were the these were the big uh, examination types. And then we had paper six because paper five was basically uh, uh, the lab work and paper six was an alternative to practical an alternative to lab work so we had to visualize a lot of that so although we had lab demonstrations some of us got to do some stuff I remember I remember one time like you know our teacher came to the classroom with some uh, copper sulfate and uh, like you know it ended up accidentally spilling So yeah, um, like it was, it was, it was on a, it was on a, uh, it was on a filter paper, and I, I believe even with a uh, filter paper, we actually like you know got to learn about uh, my first instances of uh, chromatography. But yes, um, that's where the science is. Grade six, seven. That's where the science became more challenging. And as I mentioned, those like all the measures were taken to help me out. And here is, I believe, the point where I started to slowly exceed more in mathematics than I did in biology or chemistry or physics. Oh, and yeah, and this po at this point we also had new subjects: business and uh, uh, business, uh, economics, and and uh, computer studies. I took a few lessons of computer studies, but at the end, uh, like, you know, my computer teacher as well as my Bengali teacher, uh, we said, you know, they said that, no, we, we, we can't teach him. And I understood why. I really understood why. Because, especially when it came to computers, we had the basics of, we had to learn the basics of programming. I mean, the last thing I ever coded was something on QBasic. I mean, that's all that was available to us. It's not like I'm pretty sure a lot of, lot more stuff was available because I remember seeing Visual Basic textbooks and C++ textbooks. But yeah, the, like you know, that's the for, that's the farthest I got QBasic. Okay. After the seventh grade. Um, there was a, a decision was taken or, or I was at an impasse because uh, my school administration they had a meeting with my with my parents this or with my dad they said that uh, we can't teach him we don't know we, they, we don't know how to proceed and it, it was because they've never taught a visually impaired student ever which actually turns out it's the it's essentially the story of my life almost almost everywhere I've gone the teachers I've interacted with they've never t the instructors or professors whoever in interact with most of them have never taught a visually impaired student before before me I'm like okay you know what this is a problem now this this is not a this is not a pioneering thing this is this is a problem okay but yeah um and I remember like you know the arrangement was made that okay like I will continue in school and uh, 
there will be an invest like you know my school principals and whatnot they will undertake an investigation just to see okay what can be done and at that point i remember my principal he actually met my dad and said like like you know sir i have good news there are specific clause in the british system just for students like tanveer and after that like once we figured out what the clause were at that point like you know the the uh, provision of a reader writer scribe okay like you know uh, a recording of the examination sessions and uh, like you know extra time from the 8th grade on i i started practicing for that because i knew that my final exam will be in this format where not not only me i, I not only ha- don't have experience in this but my educational system my school at that point did not have experience in this so even they wanted to help and they genuinely genuinely wanted to help me out this is why i will always be grateful to my to my uh uh group of teachers in fact i'm still in contact with with uh with some of them some of them are still teaching they didn't retire yet so yeah we had like makeshift scribes makeshift reader and scribe like you know some f- teacher who is free or some student who is not related like who i don't know so after that like you know once i moved to the ninth grade that's where the problems came up again because now i was closer and closer to the big o level exams okay and the o level exam this is some this is something purely british because i believe like you know at this point like you know we're moving farther and farther away from like you know a soviet style uh, uh schooling so this was like purely british this was in around in 2003 2000 no 2002 2003 yeah yeah be, yeah 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 this is around and around that time i actually made my first trip to the united states because uh, uh my brother he actually like you know got admitted uh to to a university here and we came to drop him off and we came to see him as well and we also took the opportunity to actually look up some some uh 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 opticians or or ophthalmologists he introduced us to assistive technology he introduced me to the my first ever cc uh, mounted cctv i even remember the price it was $1500 and it was essentially a platform with a mounted cc with a with a CCTV camera that you know it it sort of hovers over the platform and you have to put your stuff underneath and it had an on and off button it had different viewing modes and i believe it it might have had another uh button for a uh, focus and what not but that was it such a primitive piece of technology and to be honest that was actually considered new because apparently the older version because i actually like you know went to like you know we have this uh, there's this thing called lighthouses like you know i went to the columbia lighthouse for the blind um and i had a look at some of the older cctv versions you had an actual tv which is mounted on which is mounted on top of a small table and the 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 camera at the bottom of the table so you have to slide your books underneath the tv whatever you're free to underneath the tv so yeah once it, it was called prisma and before i got prisma i was barely passing because even my mathematics skills like you know it started to take a hit once i got this prisma once i started like you know using the little vision that i have to somehow read and yes 
this prisma was attached to a t because back then we had those box TVs okay and like go find out how mo how big a 29 inch TV was a 29 inch box TV was huge and this was not HD this was the 4x3 aspect ratio TV okay I, I had my prisma hooked up to that And believe me, that changed my life in terms of academics. That made me from one of the worst students. And yes, when we moved to the ninth grade, we had a, like, you know, all my life, like, class, uh, you know, class 1E, 2E, 3E, 4F, 5F, 6F, 7F, 8F, and then 9B. All also like the soviet system by the way <laughs> yeah um well well at least at least if you, like you know uh, as uh, mentioned as mentioned by videos of the ushanka show um so the moment i could use a little bit of my vision to actually read and learn by reading like i said it made me from one of the worst students to, in my class to one of the best students in my class like my prof my teachers they could not believe how much of a t u turn my grades have made and i told them like i just i hooked up a ca essentially a camera to my tv and i started reading it 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 makes everything bigger obviously there are going to be limitations because you can't you can't stare at a and I did not know this. I just realized this maybe last year or a few months ago. That even using screen magnifiers to read a extensive amount of text, it's not an equivalent substitute. It, it, it really is not. It really is not because like, you know, the, the cognitive processes that are in play you know in a normal person reading a book compared to a visually impaired low vision person reading the magnified versions of a book on a sc large screen it's quite different but you know that's for another day um but yeah th it was a much better improvement than just relying on audio alone and this is why like you know i am as for me, like, you know, I am so opposed to the notion of you have to teach every visually impaired person Braille. I am extremely opposed to this notion. This, because, like, you know, it's, Braille is good, but Braille is not the, the, the end-all, be-all solution. It's, in fact, it's very, very far from it. If, if you are to believe like some of the statistics, very, very far from the end-all, be-all solution. And given its limitations as well. But, yeah, so, and I remember, w we were at a very awkward year. Where, like, when I got to the 10th grade, the Ministry of Education, uh, you know, in my, uh, in, in the country when I went to school at, the authorities said that, no, we, we need them to have 11 years of schooling so another year was added and essentially we had the same rehearsal now it's back to 10 but you know we had another year and we got a bit more time to like you know prepare and I mean not necessarily because once uh, like you know it was announced we also took a lot of things a lot of education very slow like you know we slowed down the pace but yeah th like around the 10th like you know that transition time we moved to another school because our school was constantly looking for more places to actually t uh, expand and teach like you know better uh, venues if you will better buildings and in this school we had dedicated biology labs physics labs chemistry lab we actually had a pretty we actually had a pretty good chemistry lab but yeah uh 
apart from some uh, experiments, we actually never got to uh, like I never got to do any of the experiments or even partake in them. Like you know, even as a passive uh, a participant, it's the same with biology. It's, you know, you know, it's the it's the same with uh, it's the same with uh, physics as well. I was just like you know, essentially like a bystander, and like I had to essentially visualize on what other people are doing. And yes, a lot of people got annoyed. I could sense their annoyance. When I used to ask them, like, what are you doing? What's happening? What's happening now? What did you do now? Like, you know, I'm because I'm always tr I'm always fishing for more detail so that I can paint a clearer picture in my head so that less is left to assumption and more is left to concrete information. That way, our the, the concept that we internalize or, or, you know, the picture that we conceptualize becomes more and more accurate. But yeah, um, the 11th grade, uh, or essentially my O-level exams, um, let me just put it to you this way. When it came to the final exams, we had external visitors. All of them were astounded. Oh, me, I did not find this astounding at all. Like, you know, up, on, up until this point, because no one said like, wow, like, you know, this is astounding. Everyone says like, nah, nah, it's just hand being tan. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's just me being me. I'm, ju I'm just doing, I'm just doing what I usually do. Okay, um, so all of the people were astounded that I could essentially narrate for three and a half hours, four hours, five hours, five and a half hours. I could narrate because so some exams like normal time was was uh, was uh, three hours. So 100% is like, you know, like five and a half hours. Okay, I could narrate an the answers of an entire exam. Especially when it came to mathematics and when it came to the long descriptive biology, physics, chemistry answers. But especially when it came to the, came to the big, you know, long, you know, long answer questions in, in mathematics. Like, you know, you'll be given an equation, okay, solve this equation and make it in the format ax squared plus, plus bx plus c plus d whatever okay and you have 30 you know 30 points 30 marks like step by step how i broke it down and like i said now that i'm doing my research in this field i realize how difficult what i did was and why, despite, like, you know, so many millions of visually impaired people around the world, you see so few of them at a school level. Because the, like, you know, at least back in my day, what, what people like me had to go through to get educated. And this is one of the reasons, like, you know, I look back and I'm like, you know what? I, you know, I actually got a lot of support from people, like, you know, like, like from, f I'm not talking about family, family obviously supported me, but outside of family, I got tremendous amount of support from people who weren't obliged to support me by law. Like, if they did not, if they said we cannot help you out, you could not legally do anything against them. Like obviously right now I've heard it's changed a lot. But this is like, you know, back, you know, when I was uh, like, you know, being schooled. So yeah, that's how I ended up like, you know, uh, with my grade school. I'm Yeah, I know this is a very long video, but I wanted to make this like, you know, like, you know, just one whole experience instead of like, breaking it down like you know like the uh ushanka show does because i, I don't have those time t i remember i remember having timetables but i don't have that other time capsule item with me right now no no i, I like you know f you know pictures and whatnot no i don't have those so it's just based on based on memory so yeah so 
to put it in a nutshell, like back in the day, and I graduated my O levels in 2005. Yeah, it was that diff. It was that difficult. You had to rely on a lot of your in your your given innate abilities. A lot of your like you know own abilities, even more than like you know people who who don't have such disabilities. You had to rely on a lot to get through. As for other. Di disabled students like visually impaired students I was the only one in that entire school system I was the only one and from what I hear I was I am still the only one like you know who went through that school I'm still the only one but when it came to disabled students with other disabilities I remember a few one of them was from Bangladesh uh, he had a, he had a, okay, you know what, this person, you could say he somewhat had a visual disability, it's to the extent that from time to time he used to have double vision, but apart from that, like he was pretty normal, he had some uh, cognitive disabilities as well, and there was this another kid from Pakistan, he also had some cognitive disabilities, the kid from Pakistan after third grade, I, 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 I don't know what happened to him. I really wish, like, you know, I really wish he, like, you know, like, you know, uh, everything turned out good for him. He, and also, also the uh, the Bengali kid. The Bengali kid, after, like, the 7th or 8th grade, I, I, I don't remember what happened to him. But, yeah, that's, like, you know, and, and, and the Bengali kid, he was, a, he was actually a pretty decent student. It's just, it's just when he gets, like, you know, extremely agitated... That's when you see his uh, disability come out. When he is normal, he's you know he's just like everyone else. Okay, but yeah, I hope that sort of gives you a bit of a like you know history of my upbringing, my educational upbringing in my pre high school days. Because for us, high school was gr grade like you know the official grades eleven and twelve, like after O levels. After all levels, you have grade 11 and then grade 12. Like, you know, we have primary, secondary, and higher secondary. Higher secondary is, you know, grade 11 and 12. So next time, hopefully, I will talk about higher secondary because that's when I shifted schools. Okay, and if you found this video useful, please uh, do hit a like and a subscribe. I really use those as, like, you know, things to uh, motivate me. And also leave a comment in the comment section below. I, you know, I, I, I read, I read your comments, even if you're trolling comments, I still read your comments. Alright, this is your boy Tanvi Syed, signing out.